In this, the second part of Clay and Birds, I will begin with some interesting ceramic bird sculptures. They have been created, I'm sure, for the sheer enjoyment of the potter, who has been inspired to skillfully recreate through his craft and the medium of clay, a permanent three-dimensional object of a particular bird species. As before, they do also span centuries of time from the early Chinese, English, German and other factories or from studio potters to our modern times. These Chinese 17th century parrots are porcelain with a deep copper feldspar glaze. The Chelsea factory in England was renowned for its exquisite bird sculptures such as these chaparral cocks a lovely little dove and this spectacular rooster. About the same time, potters at the English Bow Factory were making birds. Both Chelsea and Bow produced their products in soft paste porcelain. The Meissen Factory in Germany was particularly famous for its bird sculptures from a very early period. It seems that cockatoos, and indeed parrots, were also a particular favourite of the bird sculptures. And one in particular was Joachim Kendler with this gorgeous, whimsical cockatoo. This charming, simplistic egrette comes from the Royal Copenhagen Porcelain Factory. A Royal Worcester artist made this cute little budgie and an early Australian potter, Grace Seckham, made this charming kookaburra. Back in 1994, I held an exhibition at my bakehouse pottery in Tyalgum, New South Wales, which I called Strictly for the Birds. Here are some of the works that I produced for that show. I thought that I would like to illustrate to you by the following images of the humble rooster the sheer diversity of form, design and colour that can be applied by a potter sculptor to a particular species of the avian kind. The rooster, you know, is the only bird in the Chinese zodiac calendar and is linked to good luck, wealth and fortune. It's also known as the cockerel. These images serve to demonstrate the great variety, as I've said before, of shape, colour, form and texture, glazes and bodies, and the application of the design to a particular use. Birds are very frequently used as the main design on plates, vases and tile panels uh, and here are some examples of this. This early Persian dish shows a lovely design enhanced with unglazed copper and iron enamels. The English factories of Chelsea and Worcester specialised in exotic bird decorations. This 19th century Japanese charger has the sacred crane as its main theme. A superb Charles Cato art deco vase of a green parrot. These are some tile panels. And a couple of pieces by yours truly.
And birds are also very useful as finials on pots, like in these examples. A cabbage leaf tureen with parrot finial, a lovely bisque porcelain tureen, an early Dutch Delft lidded jar, and I particularly like the Majolica honey pot on the right. And these three lovely pieces of contrasting shape and colour. And now the shape of the bird also lends itself to the creation of a particular type of vessel to hold liquid of some kind or other, such as these ones. A most delightful, colourful and whimsical porcelain cruet set from the Meissen factory, a rooster jug and an owl and chick coffee pot, this small swan scent bottle is in salt paste porcelain, and these quizzical salt and pepper shakers are souvenir products from an American Indian reservation. Chinese porcelain water dropper and bottle, who would ever have thought of chicken money boxes? Two cute birdie teapots. And some of my own creations. And let's not forget that wonderful flight of ducks so popular back in the days to decorate a spare wall space. From the traditional uh, earthenware with coloured glazes to something a little bit more humorous. And in conclusion, it would be remiss of me not to mention the Martin brothers and their wonderful, crazy, very curious and even very ugly bird figurines known as the Wally Birds, which fetch huge prices these days. The Martin brothers started what is regarded as Britain's first studio pottery in 1873 from a studio in Fulham, creating bizarre pottery pieces with a bent towards the grotesque, with all the air of Gothic fantasy. The Wally Birds quickly became some of the most famous works to come out of Victorian studio pottery making. And this Wally Bird sold for a remarkable £91,500. Would you like one? <laughs> Thank you for watching.